You can probably discern fairly rapidly as to what organ this is because as we zoom in, you could see uh, every now and then residual areas of normal uh, pulmonary architecture. If this image would like to focus anyway, here we have alveoli and alveolar walls, but they are loaded with fluid and proteinaceous material and uh, inflammatory cells. In most of the areas of the lung, you could barely see the residual pulmonary architecture because the alveoli are extensively uh, infiltrated and destroyed by inflammatory cells, fibrinous debris, fluid, and... Um, You can see that this uh, involves probably about two-thirds of the cross-section of this particular portion of lung. So let's call it a pneumonia and go on to the next case. Not. Let's actually look some of these infiltrates a little bit better. And whereas we may have a hard time discerning uh, bacteria, uh, and it's not intended to be a diagnosis of what's causing this pneumonia, let's see if we could get lucky anyway. Well. Let's look inside of some of this debris here. We could see the fibrin, we could see the blood, we could see the cells, we could see some bigger blood vessels, and we could see some surrounding alveoli, which are uh, pretty congested uh, and not quite as badly destroyed and inflamed as the ones in the top half of this picture. Well, here's some fibrin. Uh, here's some blood. Here's an interesting little area here, and here, and here. Does it look like there are maybe little trees growing in there? How could that be? Trees aren't supposed to infect lungs. Well, I think you could recognize quickly that this is our old friends, the hyphae. You could see hyphae here. You could see that they may have little septums. You could see that they branch. Uh, and even though you could see them pretty well here, take a looky over here, you could see that this whole area is loaded with a bunch of these little hair balls as well. And here's one that's nicer. And now that we are attuned into realizing that in the middle of this junk are nothing but little fungal hair balls, we at least know that this uh, pneumonia is caused by a fungus. And even though we don't know exactly the genus and species, we could say it's a hyphae. We could say it branches. If we look closely, we could see that it has perhaps a little septae between the hyphae. So um, if you were to plug into Google or a computer or a pathology book, what's a differential diagnosis of septate hyphae branching, uh, perhaps around a 45 degree angle here, or 30, let's say, uh, and, and commonly involved the lung, probably the first thing on the list would be a fungus called aspergillus. So this is aspergillosis of the lung, also occurring in immunocompromised patients, as many or most of the fungal pneumonias do. And I thank you very much.